Okay, so today I am going to make about five pounds of ground sirloin meatloaf. And it's a really easy recipe. So this is a 10 pound tube. I'll be making something else with the other five pounds. But right now I want to weigh out about five pounds. And that's what we're going to work with on my meatloaf. This was on sale for $4.99 a pound, so I had to go buy another tube. Whenever it's on sale, I buy some. There you go, that's five pounds. Put that back in the fridge. Take that five pounds of hamburger, put it in my big bowl. Okay, now I'm lazy and I don't have no spare bread laying around so I just bought a one pound, it's 15 ounces of uh, bread crumbs in a canister and these are uh, Italian style so they've probably got some herbs in them. And I'm going to add about two cups. of that. Okay. And I'm going to throw in it's two diced peppers. I did a red and the yellow. And two diced onions. Okay, and we're going to throw in three quarters of a cup of Worcestershire sauce. And last but not least, I'm going to throw in two eggs. Now comes the fun part, get my hands all pretty. And just gonna give that a good mix. And I shouldn't end up with a lot of grease in my pan, being how this is uh, ground sirloin, 97 percent fat free okay so that is all mixed up I'm gonna wash my hands here for a second as you can see my uh, bread pans are all different sizes so we're gonna work around that with a thermometer get the right temperature but right now my oven is preheating to 350 degrees and I'm just going to divide this up in those pans let me stand over here so you can see what I'm doing
And there you have it. There's four meat meatloafs. We'll get those in the oven. I need to set up my thermometers, so I'll show you that next. Okay, so I'm ready to put these in the oven, but I wanted to show you my little temperature setup I'm using with the Enzu uh, 4 probe wireless thermometers. So that'll tell me the te temperature of each individual meatloaf, which is going to be important because each one is a different size and I don't want to get it overcooked or undercooked. So I just wanted to show you how I wired that up and I'm going to take these out for now while I transfer them to the oven which is preheated to 350 degrees. Okay, so that's what it looks like with each of the probes in it. We'll slide that shut. Shut the door. Leave the transmitter sitting right there. And now I can take my little remote with me back and play on my computer and keep an eye on what the temperature is in the oven. We'll see you when they're ready to come out. I'm waiting for each one of these temperatures to get to 160. I'll see you when they come out. There we have it. The last one, which is probe one, is ready. So let's go take her out of the oven. Okay, so I've baked all these to the right temperature, 160 degrees, using that digital thermometer. It was fantastic. Uh, now I'm going to make the topping for that. And what I got here is one cup of Worcestershire sauce, one cup of brown sugar. We're going to do that without making a mess. And one can of tomato paste. One of these small cans. What is that? Six ounces. that a good mix. Okay, that's pretty well mixed up. And we're just going to pour that over the top of the meatloaf. Now while I, when I took this meatloaf out, I drained all the excess grease off into a can. So I'm just letting this kind of surround the, the meatloaf, give a good coating on it. And that should come out delicious. What I'm going to do is pop this back in the same oven for about 20 minutes. I'll have a look and I'll see when it looks nice and glazed on the top and then it'll be done.
I'll see it when it comes out of the oven. Okay, so that's cooled down a little bit. So let's get this sliced up and ready for the uh, to go in the freezer and get it frozen solid. Let's see if we can get this out of here in one piece. Nope, I can't. But that's okay. I'm going to cut it about a half inch thick. Let's see how well it holds together. Okay, there's one down. And we're going to put all this on there too. Waste not, want not. And there ain't going to be nothing wrong with that. And it tastes good. Okay. I'll get the rest of that. Mmm. I'll get the rest of that chopped up, sliced up, and in the freezer. Next time you see this, it'll be coming out of the freeze dryer. I'll see you then. Well, there you have it. There's my five pounds of ground beef sirloin meatloaf and it was actually a really short cycle on that 28 hours total so I'm kind of surprised but it's all done so let's get this bagged up and do a taste test I'm going to use my go-to gallon mylar bag with the gusset and the ziplock blobs right here were kind of like the, the drippings. I thought that'd be nice to just to reconstitute that and put it on a sandwich. This is the drippings. Okay, so let's throw a 300cc O2 absorber in each one of those bags. Squeeze out the air. And zip off it shut. my little drippings I'm going to go ahead and throw a 100 cc in there and I'm going to make a sandwich out of that at some stage
All right, let's get those heat sealed. All right, those are heat sealed. I'll put those aside. I'm going to dig out my Sharpie to mark those up. Let's get a bowl and some nice hot water. Put all those onions in there. Oh yeah, those are good onions. They're good just the way they are. Pour that hot water over the top of that. Don't get carried away, John. Let that soak. They're actually kind of soaking it up pretty quick. turning everything over so I can get the other side. It's making a nice gravy in there actually. Okay, that looks like it's kind of pretty moist in there. That's what it looks like. Bear in mind, these were the broken up pieces that I put in here. Let's see what it tastes like. Mmm. That tastes just like it tastes it when I put it in. That's good stuff. The top glaze is still a little bit crunchy, which is good. Because that had all the sugar in it. And I imagine if I left it in here long enough, that would go soft too. The meat and the onions and the peppers have rehydrated really well like I say that top glaze has just a little bit of a crunch to it but I kind of like that that is really good it's definitely going to be a go-to I think if, maybe if I rehydrate it next time I'll do it in a flat tray so that I can do have the whole piece laying flat if I had a whole piece this wasn't a whole piece but it tastes really good mm, mm, mm. yeah I am very pleasantly surprised with that
hardly any time at all in the water. And like I say, the only thing that's really tough on this is the uh, glaze that I put on there, which was really a runny glaze compared to what other people make. It was uh, made with Worcestershire sauce, quite a bit of it, and sugar. And when I baked it, it didn't glaze hard over the top or thick, but it's freeze dried hard on the top, if that makes sense. All that flavor is still here though. This is delicious. I got a bit of that glaze there. So there you have it. Look at that in the juice in there. Kind of made a nice little gravy. I didn't overdo the water. It kind of breaks apart like a meatloaf is supposed to. That is good. Yes, definitely, definitely a keeper and do again. I love this stuff. I love my freeze dryer. Well, that's another success from John and Bibbs. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next load, which is going to be uh, chili that I made with the other five pounds of ground sirloin. I'll see you then.